the best of the rest of the news, a new conservative administration is in power in Japan, and they're promising to reverse the previous administration's plans to completely phase out nuclear power by 2040. The new government, led by Shinzo Abe, is also promising to restart nuclear reactors in his country as long as they are confirmed safe. It's been less than two years since the Fukushima disaster that triggered a nuclear meltdown and left hundreds of thousands of Japanese homeless and an unknown number poisoned by radiation. And in the coming months, the consequences of this disaster will be felt here in the United States as millions of tons of tsunami debris, some of which could be radioactive, are expected to wash up on our west coast. So shouldn't we be concerned? that the new government of Japan isn't taking the risks of nuclear power seriously. Kevin Camps joins me now. He's the radioactive waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so this new government in Japan, I don't understand. This is sort of half a nuclear question and half a political question. I'm guessing you've been following this. I haven't been. I don't understand how any newly elected government in Japan Two years after Fukushima, with Fukushima still, and I want to get to that too, still been tottering. I mean, some of the reactors could say, "Oh yeah, we're we're not going to cancel." The, I mean, what's what's what is going on? Well, I think you know there's major issues at play. The the triple disaster of earthquake, tsunami, and meltdowns left Japan in an economic freefall, for one thing. Mm. And so economic concerns may explain. I mean, it is a blow that this new government is coming in. It has a pro-nuclear history. Remember, the liberal, liberal Democratic Party of Japan ruled from the end of World War II until a few years ago. And the Democratic Party of Japan ruled for a few years there. So here they're back, the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, making promises that they can turn the economy around, make everything better. But a part of their package is they are very pro-nuclear. Uh, and like you said in the intro, the the previous parliament of Japan did a major report, many hundreds of pages long, that found that the actual cause of the nuclear catastrophe was the collusion between the government, the regulator, and the industry. So they seem to, at least at first blush, be throwing all of that hard learned lesson out the door and this they're is, looking to restart the reactors. So this is the Liberal Democratic Party. Is the word liberal as in the European meaning more like Milton Friedman kind of uh, uh, libertarian liberal? Is that what they they're, mean? This is, this is actually what we would call the Republican Party? They're politically just, conservative. They're economically conservative, conservative. And when it comes to nuclear power, they are the ones who set this collusion in place beginning in the 1960s and it so just could this be grew. that they're 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 doing this because hey they've always taken money from the nuclear industry i mean where's where's tepco in all this uh, tokyo electric power company by a few months after the catastrophe began in march of 2011 was on the brink of bankruptcy so the japanese government had to step in and take it over for the most part oh. so incredibly tepco is still in charge of the fukushima daiichi site in charge of trying to keep the melted down cores cool so right. that worse doesn't happen, trying to keep the pools from collapsing and catching on fire. And what's the status of all that right now? Well, Unit 4 is still of great concern because it's a building that is greatly compromised in its structural integrity. And the worry is that a big enough earthquake could simply topple the building. And once the cooling water is lost from the pool in that collapse, then... This is the building with the waste <clears throat> in the ceiling, in the roof, yeah, the 10-story building. All of the reactors have the same setup, and there's waste in all of these pools. Nothing like what we have in the United States. Our pools are crammed much more full than the ones in Japan. But there's enough in the Unit 4 pool, for example, that what's happened already would be 1 20th of what that pool could disgorge in a fire. Wow. And... What about this nuclear waste that's heading for the United States? We've, we, um, geez, almost a year ago, it seems, you were on telling us about nuclear waste was hitting the west coast of the United States. Is this a second wave? Is, uh, what's, what's going on? It'll be continual for a long time into the future. There's the surface uh, flotsam and jetsam, the floating materials, which uh, if you read the mainstream media the past couple days, there's this uh, discounting that, oh, it's not radioactive. There's no way to know that. It could well be radioactive. Another piece of news that just broke today is that eight crew members on the USS Ronald Reagan, which was on the east coast of Japan taking part in the rescue and recovery after the earthquake and tsunami, eight of those crew members out of the 5,500 on 
the aircraft carrier, have sued Tokyo Electric and the Japanese government for the false information that they were operating under in those first critical days of uh, the disaster because they were exposed on the deck of that aircraft carrier to the radiation coming off of Japan. This was but, the shining radiation as opposed to the particulate radiation? No, this was particulates, this was gases, uh, especially the radioactive iodine-131 uh, was coming out in huge quantities at that point. But the Japanese federal government at the time was denying that there had been a meltdown. So was Tokyo Electric. They could have known within the first hours because there are telltale signs. There are radioisotopes that can only come from the heart of well, a reactor how, core. How could a U.S. aircraft carrier not have radiation detectors on board in this day of dirty bombs and, 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 and you know, small nukes? That's a very good question. I think they do. And in fact, the Japanese government asked the U.S. government and military to come in pretty much immediately with their state-of-the-art radiation detectors, which are airborne. They're really designed to detect uh, atmospheric bomb blasts so right. that they can sniff down who just blew up a nuclear bomb right. and who, who's responsible and what's going on. Kind of find out what North Korea is up to, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And those were deployed in Japan, and there was real-time transmission of that data back to DOE headquarters here in D.C., but were any and of us informed? they weren't telling us, and they weren't telling the soldier or the sailors on board this ship? There was direct communication between the governments of the U.S. and Japan. And so for, you know, experts to say that the flotsam and jetsam hitting the west coast of North America is not radioactive, there's no radiation monitoring going on Can we turn situation. them all off now? Uh, not all. There are pre-Fukushima um, updates that are done once a month or once a season on various things like right. the milk supply, the water supply, the air. What are we finding? Uh, there's still... The, the worst of the emissions from Fukushima Daiichi were in the first weeks and months. But there are continual problems there. There are breakdowns in the cooling system. So there are still emissions. They're just nothing like is, what happened. Is, for example, fish that people on the West Coast are eating uh, is contaminated with cesium and some of the other? I mean, cesium has a half-life of 34 or 38 years, doesn't it, the two different? Yeah, it's about 30 years, so a hazardous persistence of at least 300 years, if not 600 years. So that which got out, which was massive, is in the food supply. And in fact, because of bioaccumulation, that's going to build up over time. As big fish eat little fish, we're at the top of the food chain, so we're going to get the worst of that eventually. And because of the lack of monitoring or adequate monitoring, we don't really know what's going on. And real quickly, we have, we have some, some civilian monitoring, don't we? Isn't there a, a, a network of people? Are they learning anything? There are people across the country in various places who are trying to keep tabs on things. But of course, there's no funding. These are nonprofit efforts. Uh, the federal government of the United States has really been derelict in its duty to protect our health. Remarkable. Kevin Camps, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Tom. Keep up the great work at Beyond Nuclear.